Shalom, Kwam Yesha Allah, Kuholo Yimala Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim, Rakha Hakodash, double honors to our apostles and elders, a great millstone who rule well, that by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth. Just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa that's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai to the best of their ability in these last days. And we do these lessons to let the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans know their true biblical nationality, which you are Israelites. You come from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob's name was changed to Israel, or Yahshua Allah. He is a prince of the power, and that's who you are. You're not these names that the so-called white man has given you everywhere that he's gone and conquered. You know, um, enslaving people. Those are slave names. Um, their biblical name is their, they come from a, a man named Esau. They are the Edomites, the people that came out red, because they're not actually white people. They're actually pinkish to reddish in color. And they were gifted with the sword. And that sword today would be like your modern-day gun, your modern-day um, grenade. You know? and, and especially these fighter jets that you see right here on the screen, you know, um, nuclear weapons, things of that nature. This man is expert at making killing um, instruments. No one can out make a, a killing instrument better than the so-called white man. You, you you can try it if you want to. You're not going to be able to do it. Why? Because that's a gift that Isaac, our forefather, blessed him with. So, let's get off into some of this here. And um, it says, Pentagon, Pentagon juggling Russia, China, seeks billions for long-range weapons. So, they juggling a war between another nuclear, um, two other nuclear countries. Because China has nukes. And um, Russia has nukes. Now, if you've been paying attention to the news, all the, all the money that these countries are spending is going towards military might. They're not even caring about their citizens. The citizens are going hungry, man. The citizens are starving. The citizens, you know, are going through all kinds of um, rough patches, man. But these people don't care. Hey, they just, <laughs> you know, because these leaders, they're not, they're not um, suffering. They're eating well. You know, they have the best of the food. They have the best of the water. They have the best of health. You know, the best doctors and all this other stuff. They're not worried about, you know, um, the average citizen, man. But let's get some of this real quick. Matter of fact, though, let's get a scripture real fast. Because we have to realize um, what day and time that we're in. And the Lord said to uh, watch and pray. To be circumspect. This is on Matthew chapter 24. And this scripture comes out a lot. These particular verses right here. Because it's giving you a blueprint as to what the Lord was talking about will be happening in the last days, right? So we're going to start from verse 3, Matthew 24 and 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Yahawashai, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus, the Lord's name is not Jesus. There's no letter J in Hebrew. There's no letter E in Hebrew. There's no letter O in Hebrew. There's no letter U in Hebrew. There's no letter um, V in Hebrew. So the Lord's name is not Yeshua, Jesus, all these different names that people are calling them. Yahuwah. You know, the Father's name is not no damn Jehovah, you know, and all this other stuff. The true name of the Father is Yahweh, which means that he exists where he is to be the existing one. And the true name of his son is Yahawashai. Which means that he's the savior or deliverer in Paleo-Hebrew. So we use the Hebrew name of our Lord. Because this Jesus, the letter J, was invented in 1524, like 500 years ago. So if the Lord walked the earth 2,000 years ago, then his name can't be Jesus. And then you got these people running around talking about how his name don't matter. But if somebody call you out of your name, <laughs> call you a B, or, you know, whatever. You know, or just call you something that's just not your name. You're going to correct that person. You calling me by another name. I'm not answering you. Straight up, man. So anyway, let's go on. And Yahweh answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach. Well, it says Christ. We call him the Mashiach, the anointed one. And shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars. See, these are the things that he's naming off, right? And ye shall hear of wars. And rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So we're not troubled by these things, you know? And we're not going to be troubled by when it really, really, you know, squirm, you know, when it, when, when it really pops. 
Because we're praying for these things to happen. It says, um, for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. But the point that I wanted to focus on right here was the, the wars and rumors of wars, right? Because that's all that you're hearing about. That's all you're going to hear about, you know, in these last days, other than, you know, them slipping in the MOTB on you in the backdrop. You know, those are the last main prophecies is that MOTB. Which is the mark of the beauty and the beast, if you know what I'm talking about, Revelation 13, 16, and um, World War Three. Hey, I'm gonna let that third woe, that third woe is 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 on point, man. Matter of fact, let's see here. Lock it. And I'm gonna go off into a little bit of that article to show you just how foolish these clowns is. It's a lot. Yeah, that third war was coming, baby. That's Revelation 11 and 14. The second war is past. Behold, the third war comes quickly. And that, that, that second war was World War II. The first war, World War I. And we are approaching the third war. It's happening, man. Matter of fact, now let's go off into some of this to show that hey, we're getting close to this thing. It says the Pentagon on Monday unveiled details about its $842 billion budget proposal. And it's like a trillion dollars, man. I'm telling you all, they're putting, they putting all the money towards war stuff. In the meanwhile, you know, people just trying to afford groceries, man. And <laughs> gas getting back and forth to work, things of that nature, man. But they putting your money, taxpayers' money, towards war. And they sending it to Ukraine for war. Because that's pretty much what they're asking for some of this money for. It says the Pentagon on Monday unveiled details about its $842 billion budget proposal outlining plans for increased investment in long-range missiles and other advanced munitions as it balances the impact of continued military support for Ukraine with the rising concerns about a potential conflict with China. Now, these people just came out of Afghanistan. Afghanistan, they was over there for like 20-some years, man, blowing money. They come right out of there. Immediately, like two or three months later or so, they, they 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 dealing with Russia on this level. So they just blowing money, man. They got money to blow. On the, on, on the backs of the taxpayers, man. It says the, the spending plan represents 3.2% increase over the Defense Department's fiscal 2023 budget. Approved by Congress in December and was instantly deemed inadequate by Republicans. Who indicated that they would revise it upward as they did last year. Telling you, man, these the, hey, the so-called white man. That's all this man does. Deputy Defense Secretary Kathleen Hicks said Monday that the Pentagon intends to invest 30.6 billion in munitions in the next fiscal year. Okay, it says a year war in Ukraine, which is relying on Western arms to defend against Russia's invasion, has diminished U.S. stocks and exposed shortcomings in the nation's military manufacturing might. The war also has underscored how significant. Long-range weapons are expected to be in any major future conflict. And as the Pentagon prepares to possibly, for the possibility of disputes with China. See? Here you go. You out here low on weapons because you're giving them to somebody else. And then you're trying to bang with two countries that's got nuclear weapons, man. And you know, these Americans are proud, man. Super proud. Then you got some woman at the helm. She running shit. It's, it's just out of control, man. I don't really want to go too much further into this. You you get the gist of it. They hey they <laughs> matter. Let me see here. McCord said Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who was traveling with Biden in California on Monday, is happy with the budget number that has been proposed. Even it even if it doesn't buy everything that we would would have liked to do, the comptroller predicted that. It is a matter of time before the Pentagon budget reaches a trillion dollars per year. <laughs> when the numbers are what they are, it's inevitable, he said. It just reflects the growth of the economy. Hey, no, what the fuck you mean, growth of the economy? You're 40, bi you're 40 trillion in debt. See? <laughs> hey, man, this man must be stopped, man. Now, let's get it. Because I, 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 uh, I went into this because I was watching this earlier as well, right? Biden announces nuclear-powered submarines for Australia. 
See? See? Now, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, tell me where how, how, where do you come in on this? Other than them just uh, uh, working the shit out of your ass for, for, for little or nothing and taking money out of your checks to do all this shit. What do we have to do with Ukraine? What do we have to do with Australia? What do we have to do with um, NATO, the European? What do we have to do with these white countries? Or so-called white countries, I call them. We have absolutely nothing to do with them. And, and that, that ought to show you that we're still in slavery. Because we should be, if we wasn't in slavery, we'd have our own country. And we'd be um, um, pushing forth a military budget for, of our own. <laughs> you see, as our as our own sovereign people, right? Okay, but anyway, you can see <laughs> what's popping. Cause why do they uh, why are they giving um Australia these nuclear a fleet of them, nuclear submarines? Cause it's, they about to get popping with this World War Three. Everybody is getting set, even the French. Matter of fact, I seen something on the French today too. Let me see if they got something in here. Yeah, they was talking about um, some things, too. And that's why the scripture says to um, walk circumspectly, man. To watch and pray. Um, we're trying to go into all that. Okay, it says 430 billion euros. The budget for the period will stand at 14... 113 billion euros or 447 billion dollars basically up from 295 billion so see these countries they're putting all the money into the military why are they doing that here you go you got now they acting as if the war in ukraine just pushed all the food prices up pushed the gas up but you got here you go you got america spending a trillion dollars you got France damn near spending a trillion dollars. We ain't even included all the other 29 or 30 or so damn NATO nations that's um, putting towards military um, um, a military budget. You know, I guess if you was to put it all together, man, they probably out 20, 30 trillion dollars, man, just in war shit. So you trying to tell me this one continent supposed to be the breadbasket of the world. You spending all this money on the military. And, 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 and y'all can't find no land over hell. Bill Gates buying up land. You can't rent a little bit of land from Bill Gates to, to um, plant wheat. <laughs> you know, and all these other things that they're talking about. That's how you know they on some bullshit, man. But they're gearing up for World War III, man. And that's exactly what's going on. And, and it's, hey, it's all these countries. See, you got um, military budget by country right here. You got the United States at $750 billion, man. China is saying at $237 billion. Saudi Arabia. But you, hey, you, you can get this list if you want to. Um, let me see. Let's just go into it a little bit. But this is insane, man. $750 billion? There's no way that there should be hung, um, homelessness, hunger, um, you name it, man. See, that's why when the Lord comes, we're going to run a righteous kingdom, man. It's not going to be any of this bullshit. And it ain't going to be no more of this war shit. You see what I'm saying? Ain't going to be no more of this. See, here go the billions right here. But they'll tell you that Ukraine, Russia, done plugged up the whole world and nothing can flow. But y'all got all this money to spend on military might, man. It's incredible. $778 billion. And this was um, 2020. This is beyond, beyond that now. $778 billion for the Americans. $252 billion estimated. Which China probably putting a lot more money into their shit too. You know, China not going to put their... They ain't going to let you know all the, all the details. India, $72.9 billion. Russia, $61.7 billion. United Kingdom, $59.2 billion. Saudi Arabia, $57.5 billion. Estimated. Germany, $52.8 billion. France, 52.7 billion. Japan, 49 billion. South Korea, come on, man. And these, come on, man. We already, man. This shit is out of control. Anyway, this is the point that what I wanted to make, though, that Matthew 24 and, and um, 6. 
and ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And like I said again, AC America juggling between Russia and China. They trying to defend Taiwan. They trying to defend Ukraine. They trying to defend Israel. They trying to... Come on, man. In the meanwhile, the people going hungry. You got damn near uproars of the people in this place. The people, hey, and, people and people about to be pissed, man, when, uh, with this bank shit that's going on lately. People are pissed. So, I mean, hey, we're living in the last days, man. This is about it. You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we do these lessons so you, you, you can see the comparisons. You can see the prophecies, you know, as we read them out. These things are happening. These things are happening. It's famines going on all over the world. They ain't even talking about the Turkey earthquake no more. About 60,000 people just died last month in that earthquake. They're not talking about that, but those earthquakes, and it's been more earthquakes since then. So some, those are the things that the Lord was talking about, earthquakes. He mentioned the famines, pestilence. You, they, they, they still talking about all kinds of different damn diseases out here. Plagues. You know what I'm saying? The wars, the rumors of wars. You got the uproars of the people. You got sedition of men all over the world. All these, these countries are coming up against their governments. The people are coming up against the government. All those things are happening. That's why... I, Matter of fact, let's go into uh, let's go into the apocrypha real quick. And I mean, we're we're praying for these things. We're actually rooting these things on. This is uh Second Ezra chapter nine, verse one. Let's start from from the top, verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Salakium, down to 10%. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee. Even from the beginning. So these things are happening. He said to measure all the time diligently. How do you measure the times? By what the Lord has said was going to be happening in the last days. That's your measuring stick right there. You see? So I'm not going to keep this long. I wanted to, you know, uh, just touch on this for a hot sec. I tried to do it before and I didn't have a lot of battery life on here. And uh, once I recorded it, <laughs> you know, it kind of died on me and didn't keep the recording. I kind of done that work for nothing. But anyway, I mean, it's, it's done. It's the... You know, I you know I would just say in the spirit that this is the way that the Lord wanted it done. You know, to just mention these things and um, bring out these scriptures and precepts to us. So, with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Shalom.